hello. Today we are going to review some common eyelid and eyelash causes for red eye. First, let's go over a little bit of eyelid anatomy. What I'd like you to pay attention to here is where the meibomian glands exit at the lid margin near the eyelashes. Also, look where the septum is and how it separates the eyelid skin from the orbital contents. Also, something you want to note is that the conjunctiva, which lines the surface of the eyeball, also lines the surface of the inside of the eyelid, which is why many eyelid conditions can cause a secondary red eye. One of the most common causes for red eye related to eyelid is blepharitis. This is an inflammation of the eyelid margin glands or meibomian glands. Symptoms of blepharitis can include foreign body sensation, a feeling of swollen or irritated lids, as well as itching, burning, and tearing. Signs under exam include lid crusting, redness of the lids, telangiectasia uh, uh, vessels near the lid margins, as well as misdirected lashes. Common causes for blepharitis include staphylococcus and other skin flora infections of the meibomian glands, which then cause secondary in inflammation. Other associations with blepharitis are rosacea of the skin and eventually can lead to chalazion formation. Treatment for blepharitis always includes some form of lid hygiene, eyelid washing with warm water as well as with diluted baby shampoo. We often also add topical antibiotics or, and or steroids to address both infection and inflammation. Typically we also use some type of lubricant which can include artificial tears or lubricating ointments to treat the eye surface. Doxycycline can be an oral antibiotic that we use to treat those who have significant meibomian gland disease and rosacea as well. Blepharitis can often then lead to a chalazion, which is a staphylococcal infection of a specific meibomian gland, which then leads to a tender nodule within the tarsal plate. And this can then lead to secondary cellulitis of the surrounding skin as well. Treatment of a chalazion often includes hot compresses with massage of the area to try to open up the pocket of inflammation and allow it to drain on its own. We often then add topical antibiotic stero or steroid ointments to decrease, again, infection and inflammation. Sometimes inc incision and drainage are often used once the infection has subsided if the nodule has not resolved. Preceptal cellulitis is an infection of the preceptal eyelid skin. Causes of this infection include sinus infection, eyelid margin infection, and trauma. This typically presents as red, indurated, and painful eyelids, but most notably will not include proptosis, blurred vision, or any extraocular muscle limitation. Treatment for preceptal cellulitis includes oral antibiotics and very close observation. Close observation is required to monitor for the development of orbital cellulitis. This is an extension of the infection to the orbit from the preceptal area or from direct, directly from the sinuses. Symptoms and signs of this include those of preceptal cellulitis plus diplopia or double vision associated with restricted extraocular muscle movement within the orbit, vision loss and finding of an afferent pupillary defect which suggests compression of the optic nerve within the orbit, and also no improvement with oral antibiotics. At this point, if orbital cellulitis is suspected, often diagnosis is made with clinically as well as with an orbital CT. If orbital cellulitis is suspected, management is typically with IV antibiotics as an inpatient, as well as sometimes surgical drainage of a localized abscess within the orbit. Herpes zoster, finally, is another infection um, which includes reactivation of shingles on the unilateral side of a face. This can present as crusting and ulceration of the skin innervated by the first division of the trigeminal nerve. Oftentimes, this can also include the tip of the nose, the sign is called Hutchinson sign, which is associated with increased chance of ocular involvement because of shared nervous supply. The treatment of the eye involves typically lubrication. The patient will need oral acyclovir within 48 hours of the onset of the vesicles to treat the rash, and lubrication is important for the eye for comfort. Ocular complications to monitor for would be conjunctivitis, uveitis, keratitis, 
scleritis, or even optic neuritis, which should be managed appropriately. And finally, just to review a few other causes of red eye related to the eyelid. One is called an ectropion, which is an outturning of the eyelid. Entropion, which can lead to trichiasis, which is interning of an eyelid with eyelash rubbing against the, sur the surface of the eye. Both of these things are typically treated with lubrication, but will most often need surgical management. And finally, around the eyelid is also the nasolacrimal duct, which drains tears from the eye into the nose. This can get obstructed and then infected, which is called dacryocystitis, is and typically treated with, in infect with antibiotics. That concludes the talk and our review of red eye caused by eyelid or eyelash disease.